Good morning. And a very warm welcome to you all to our worship here at Castle Methodist Church, Colchester. To those who are following us at home or who will be listening to the recording of this service, we extend a warm welcome and ask that God will bless us all as we are united in fellowship with one another. If you are here visiting us this morning, welcome, and we hope you will feel able to join us for refreshments and continuing fellowship at the close of the service. This morning we welcome Chris, our minister, the Reverend Chris Priest, to lead us in our act of worship. It's good to have you with us once again, Chris. So let us prepare ourselves for worship, remembering we're here in the presence of our Lord with a moment of quiet. Morning everyone. Morning. It's great to be with you again. Um, I hope that it's cool enough for some. Uh, there may be others, unlike me, who like it much warmer, but I'm pleased it's a little cooler. And it's wonderful to be with us, with you today. The theme for our service is the rhythm of life. And so we will be thinking about different rhythms of life. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. We join together as we continue to praise God and we sing together number 21 from him, Singing the Faith, Born in Song.
So let us join in prayer together. Let us pray. Creator God, you made the world with imagination greater than we can realise. The world in its vastness, but also in the minutest of detail. You are present and active in the world, wise beyond any thoughts we can have, yet always walking alongside us in the whole of life. You sent Jesus to the world so that you became known to us in your humanity, but also that your divine nature was revealed to us through him. The power of Jesus is greater than any words could express whilst also caring for every person throughout the world. Your Holy Spirit is active in the world today, leading and prompting where new ways of approaching things are needed. The power of your Holy Spirit is such that we're aware of your presence without any doubt, whilst at other times you work gently and quietly to guide us imperceptibly. We praise you that in the whole of our lives, you continue to seek us out, even when we move away from you. Your character is unchanging and full of grace and truth, so that as we turn to you, we can depend on you and trust wholly in your character. Forgive us for the times where we've not spent the time with you that we should, or the times where we've not recognised you speaking to us through others. We know that you are the one who forgives to all who truly confess to you. And we're thankful of your grace, shown to us through Jesus' death and resurrection, and who brings us new life and freedom. Help us to be open to your work in the life of the world, our communities, church, and in ourselves. Open our hearts to your constant presence, our minds to your unfailing truth, our souls to your life-giving spirit, so that we may see you at work throughout the world, today and in every day to come. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite any who of our younger members of the congregation, or any who are feeling particularly young at heart today, come and sit down at the, come and sit down at the front. That would be great. Now, in a moment, Bob's going to put some pictures up for us of four things, a razor, a phone, a drill, and a toothbrush. What do they all have in common with each other? Sorry? All electric. Now, you're very, very close. What form, well, I was going to say what form of electricity. I'm going to get that horrendously wrong. Okay, let's not go there. We're not plugging them in, so they've got what in them to make them charge, batteries, and are these batteries that you use once or you keep charging up? Keep charging up. Wonderful, well done. It's great, isn't it, when someone gets straight to the punchline. That's wonderful, thank you. So these all contain rechargeable batteries. And there are times in our lives, aren't there, where we're thinking about the rhythm of life today, and there are times in our lives where we need recharging. Maybe we just need to relax and do something different. So what sort of things do we do to recharge? There's some pictures on the screen if we want some help. But what sort of things might we do? Sorry? Go on holiday. What a great idea. Yes? It's only about a month to the, to the school summer holidays. So it's all right. It's coming. What else? So we can go on holiday. What else might we do? Go out with friends. Brilliant. Has, have you all read the script? This is brilliant. Okay, I don't mind if we go off script. Any other ideas? What sort, sort of things might we do? Go to the cinema. So we're going out with friends, going to the cinema, just doing something different. And at this time of exams, we've probably seen some of us enough of the books, haven't we, to do something different. And when we do something different, we're doing that physically and emotionally. And it becomes part of our rhythm of life, doesn't it? It becomes part of the point at which we say, do you know, it's six o'clock on a Friday night, I'm not doing any more homework now. 
Okay, just pick that up whenever. Um, whereas, but we also spiritually need to have a rhythm. We need to spend time with God, whether it's in prayer, whether it's just quiet, relaxing, in nature, being aware of God's presence. We need to find that time, both with others and by ourselves, so that we can spend time being with God, that we can be renewed and recharged spiritually. And some of what we're going to be thinking about today will help us to do that. But we bring the whole of our lives before God, knowing that we have these rhythms, these times, I mean, eating and drinking is all part of the rhythm of life, but we need to do those. So let's pray together. Loving God, we know that you love us all throughout the whole of our lives. You ask us to come just as we are to you. We know that we need time to eat, time to sleep, time to wake, time to work. But Lord, we also need time with you. So as we think through what it means to spend our lives with you, think through the physical and emotional needs that we have, we bring before you the whole of our lives. We pray that today you will speak to us through the words that you speak and through the words of others, that we may learn more of you. And we pray for the young people that they may also find more of you today and in every day. And so, Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. Thank you all. Are you, do you want to go and sit back with where, where you were before? But it's great to see you. So we're going to sing again. Um, you, you're probably noticing there's musical thread running through most of our hymns today as well. But we're going to sing together number 74 for the music of creation. So we hear our two readings for today. Thank you. Fifty. Praise ye the Lord. 
Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the fervent of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Our New Testament reading is taken from John 15, verses 5 to 17. The vine and the branches. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because the servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Thanks be to God. Thank you both. Before we reflect on those readings, we're going to sing again number 477, Teach Me to Dance.
Well, if we weren't awake before, we will be now. Let's pray. Loving God, as we think about what it means to follow the rhythm of life, may we indeed hear the things that you are trying to say to us. And so we pray in Christ's name. Amen. When I started down the street last Sunday, feeling mighty low and kind of mean, suddenly a voice said, Go forth, neighbour, spread the picture on a wider screen. And the voice said, Neighbour, there's a million reasons why you should be glad in all four seasons. Hit the road, neighbour, leave your worries and strife. Spread the religion of the rhythm of life. For the rhythm of life is a powerful beat, puts a tingle in your fingers and a tingle in your feet. Rhythm on the inside and rhythm on the street. And the rhythm of life is a powerful beat. I don't know if you've ever tried to sing that song. I had the um, privilege or otherwise of singing it with a choir. But it goes remarkably quickly. And trying to get the right words in the right place and have any sort of understanding of what's going on is rather hilarious. And at least one person's nodding. So I'm clearly not on my own, which is great. Thank you. Equally, as we have just heard, it's not easy to try and say the words without going into the rhythm of the song itself. I did try, but I wasn't getting on very well. And part of the lasting effect of the song is the strength of the rhythm. There's something very powerful in it, and if you haven't already got it going round your head as an earworm, just have a quick look at it when you get home, and it will be there for days. But what is the rhythm of life? What can we learn about the rhythm of life from the Bible passages we've heard this morning? Psalm 150 is the final psalm of the book. It's a psalm of praise for the whole of creation, who's praising God on earth and in heaven. It's a psalm that rejoices in all that God has done, is doing, and will do, and reminds us that everything that has breath praises the Lord. It's a psalm which leaves us with a real feeling and sense of exuberance, enthusiasm and energy. It connects us to God in Christ through the Holy Spirit into the whole of our lives. Our whole being is connected to the whole of God in the whole of life. What better way can there be to end the book of Psalms than with this deep reminder of the joy of God that we can have in our lives? The Gospel passage reminds us of the importance of being connected to God. We're reminded of the deep link that comes from the vine and the branches, which are connected to one another and from which our life comes. Jesus expresses his relationship with the disciples as his friends. Our closest friend is Jesus, who dwells inside us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the source of our life and being, which comes through the salvation that's offered through the cross and resurrection. Both these passages come together in the acknowledgement that our connection to God is so deep within us that we cannot survive without it. For everything that has breath to praise the Lord means that the fundamental part of our physical being is at the core of us and our relationship with God. Jesus laid down his life for his friends, and that as we remain in Jesus' love, our lives have meanings in a new way. The rhythm of our life cannot be separated from our relationship with God. There are many musical metaphors used within the psalm. Some of the instruments are associated with fanfares, such as trumpets. Others, like the percussion instruments of tambourines and cymbals, combined with the reference to dancing, immediately make us think of strong and vibrant rhythms. If we were to think of a Caribbean carnival or an African gathering, the movement of the rhythm is such that the dancing makes us tap our feet, uh, tap our toes at the very least, 
if indeed those of us who can't dance like me even find ourselves moving along to it. We join in completely. The rhythms that are there are so catchy that we can't help but get swept along by the strength of the rhythm and into a new reality and expression of life. In our spiritual lives, we need to have a rhythm that takes us along so that our relationship with God continues to develop. A rhythm is a dynamic expression of music. It can change. Not many pieces have exactly the same rhythm all the way through, though some do have quite a a lot, perhaps, of repetition. And I'm sure there will be people afterwards who can say to me, ah, but what about, and what about that one as well? But rhythms are not static, but they give us a structure. Our spiritual lives need to do the same. We need a rhythm to our life with God, but there will be times where it changes, speeds up, becomes a bit more intense, and other times where it's slower and simpler. The rhythm may work in one way when we're alone with God, and it may have many more layers of complexity when we're with others. The rhythm of life is indeed a powerful beat, and it does put a tingle in our fingers and a tingle in our feet. When we come to church, we sing, we pray, we read the Bible, we share fellowship with one another, thinking through the joys and the sorrows in life. Above all, we come to focus on our relationship with Jesus, to learn more of God, and to sense where the Holy Spirit might be working in and amongst us. This is true in church, but it's also true in the whole of our lives. To live the rhythm of life is to be built up and sustained in the time we spend with one another here, but it's also to live that in the whole of our lives for the remainder of the week. We can only do that when we spend time with God, both on our own and together. The song lyrics talk of the rhythm on the inside and the rhythm on the street which may help us to remember the importance of both aspects. Jesus modelled a rhythm of life, which involved him leaving the disciples and going to pray on his own to God the Father. We also see him praying with others in great crowds, blessing God, breaking bread, and giving to others as well. Jesus is the one who brought salvation and healing to all people through his death, and resurrection, and it's his saving grace that we celebrate every time we meet together. However, in every breath of our body, we can give praise and thanks to God for the love shown to us through Jesus. The Gospel reminds us of this great love for all people, but also that remaining in Christ's love is there so that we can share together through our lives the difference that Jesus makes to us. There is a need for our rhythm of life in God to be spent time spent with God alone and with others. We need both for a healthy rhythm to be in place. Whilst many of the monasteries were destroyed during the time of Henry VIII, there's much that we can learn from the monastic rhythms of life. The day is punctuated by times of coming together for prayer, work, and eating with one another. There are also times of silence, reading, and study, where one can develop their relationship with God on their own. The times of recreation might be with one another, or more solitary in nature. To have a regular rhythm of life doesn't, helps us not to neglect time on our own, or time with together. We need both to be with God. Just as a piece of music doesn't have the same rhythm throughout the whole piece, a relationship has variation within it as well. To have regular practices of being with one another and alone with God is to set up a healthy approach of discernment of God's work through the Holy Spirit in our own lives 
and our life as part of a community. It's not to be stuck in a rut where nothing can change. Rhythms allow for variation, but also allow us to keep in sync so that we're not neglecting important parts of our relationship. To truly love each other as the gospel commands is to have a dynamic and close relationship with God, which is worked out as us with God and us, God and others, working out together what it means to be disciples of Christ here and now. We need to develop practices of being with God and doing for God. We may have a natural leaning towards being with God. This could mean we have a prayer ministry or a more meditative approach to life. We may have a much more active approach where our discipleship is shown through what it looks to be through a very busy schedule. It's fine for us to have a natural affinity with one or the other, but both must play a part. We cannot grow with God if we don't allow Jesus time to speak to us through the quiet of our lives. We need space and time spent with God so that the reference point of our lives is centred once again. The beat of a piece of music that is out of sync with the rest never bodes well. Equally, we need to be with others and to show others what it means to love Jesus. Every part of a piece of music has a beat. It has a rhythm. It has different instruments or voices that bring the music alive. In other words, we need others to help us to reference our relationship with God. But we also need time spent with God for ourselves. The rhythm of life is one of balance. Remaining in the love of Jesus is to be able to discern the way in which Christ works in our lives. If we only ever spend time on our own, we can lose our point of reference and centre. When we do this, we can think that something is of God when in fact it isn't. We need to share with others what we feel God is doing in our lives so that others can be encouraged. As we share in those wider conversations, we can begin to get a sense of where God might be calling us as a community. The rhythm of life is about both. We're called to develop our discipleship by learning more of God through following Jesus. We discern God's direction through the Holy Spirit. And it's when those seemingly unrelated conversations begin to happen that God's will can begin to be seen. I read once in a book, I think it was by Michael Moyner, about a church that was trying to discern where God was leading them. Some people in the church felt that they were being called into the local community to do something different, and that this has come about through individual prayer and subsequent conversations. The local doctor's surgery had identified that there was an increase in the number of appointments which had at their foundation social isolation and loneliness. An unplanned conversation led to more discussions, and over time the church began to hold a coffee morning in the waiting room of the doctors. And eventually this led to a quiet and appropriate sharing of the gospel and the gradual introduction of a prayer tree. A rhythm of life which included both personal time with God and also time and prayer in a simple way came together. In that time and in that place, God could work because the rhythm of life had spoken in a way that opened up a new rhythm of life for others. Of course, that won't work everywhere, but does, I hope, act as an example of the need to have a rhythm of life in, as the song puts it, both on the inside and on the street. In other words, it's seeking God in private, sharing in a safe place, and then stepping out to show God's love to others. As we approach this week, a few questions perhaps for us to think about. 
What is our rhythm of life? Is it in sync with God and others? Or do we need to open ourselves up in a new way? Is it a rhythm which is based on remaining in God's love and sharing Christ's love with others? Do we need to revisit our rhythm of life so that we can genuinely and wholeheartedly praise God with our every breath? These are questions certainly I will dwell on and encourage you to do the same as we seek for that holistic rhythm of life with and for God. Amen. We're going to sing a song which, well, I'm not going to say whether it's known or not. I think it, it, it depends, I think is probably the answer. Um, so we're going to sing the first verse and chorus through. I will sing it and anybody who knows it, please join me. I'm always happy to have friends. But then we will go back to the beginning if you prefer to listen to it so that we, we do then have the opportunity to sing it all through together. This is a, a song that reminds us that when the music fades, our lives are all about God. Let's sing together.
There will be a prayer, but then also time for us to bring our own rhythm of life before God. That will be a time of silence, and I encourage you to say whatever you need to say before God. So before we sing, let's pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank and praise you for the gift of creation that shows us the order that you bring to the world. In creation, you show us the rhythms of the life of the world and call us to a life of work, rest and recreation. As we bring our prayers to you, we acknowledge the times where we've not spent the time with you that we should, or where we've deliberately shut you out for whatever reason. We pray your forgiveness for these times and we ask that as we bring before you the things in our lives that we want to rejoice in or ask forgiveness for or for those things where we seek your guidance we pray that through your holy spirit we will listen to you in this time and so we bring the rhythm of our lives before you now Lord of all hopefulness, we offer you our prayers for all those who have woken up this morning feeling distress and despair. May they know of your care and compassion through the actions of others, whilst you prompt us to walk alongside those in need during the day. We pray for those who are waking full of joy, hope and expectation. May their trust in, be such that they recognise that all comes from you, and may our trust in you be deepened throughout the day. Lord, all eagerness, Lord of all faith, we sing. Gracious God, in the middle of the day, we offer our prayers to you for all those who are struggling at work. They may have unfulfilling roles or a difficult morning. We pray that all who are at work may know of your presence 
even if they don't recognise it as coming from you. We pray for all who believe in you, who are in the workplace. May others see our faith and our trust in you in both our words and actions, so that others may come to know you for themselves. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, we sing. Compassionate Lord, we pray for those who are lonely. There are those who have spent the day alone, watching the busyness of the world and feeling on the sidelines. There will be others who are returning home to a time of lack of purpose or fulfilment. We pray that you will send others to embrace those in need and help them to find a sense of identity in you. We pray for all who return home, who have recognised your love and grace through the day in some way. May we be open to welcoming others and showing others your grace as we pray for more of your love in our hearts. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, we sing. Coming, Lord, as we look back on the day we reflect on your love for all people. We pray for all those who are struggling with grief, especially the families of the students in Nottingham. We pray too for those who are suffering of any illness in any way. May your peace bring healing sleep to all in need. We pray for ourselves that we acknowledge your grace, recognise your presence in every part of our day and lives, and sleep well, ready to be refreshed to serve you once again. We bring our prayers together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come to receive our offering for today.
Let's pray. Loving God, we pray that these offerings which we give to you as a token of our love may be used throughout the days and the weeks. Lord, you know the needs for them. Prompt us by your Spirit that we may exercise our stewardship as your disciples, that they may be used for all in need. We offer ourselves to you, just as we are, but knowing that you take our skills, our gifts and our talents. Transform them within us that we may serve you, that our rhythm of life may reflect your love as we share with others. And so we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Our final hymn encourages us to sing songs of praises. Let's stand as we're able to sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, but now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>